really, really nice. Yeah, wasn't that nice? Seventies like synth vibe. Sixteen bit. Sega mm-hmm. Genesis. Mm-hmm. Dystopic future. Hat chat. Yeah, so dystopic. Uh, future cop LAPD. Thank you. Oh, Welcome oh, yeah. to Hat Chat episode ninety four with your hosts Chris Trot, Ross Thornby, Alex Smith. Man, Future Cop LAPD was such a good game. I recently I got it that again. Game. Cause I don't it's know. It's the thing that transforms from a walker into like a little car, right? Yeah. And you like wander through. It's ahead of its that. time. It is. That and um, it was just really fun to play. There was the other one where you're um, in like a spaceship flying around um, where you're also a cop. Oh, God. Same era. It was like PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1. And there was. G Police? Is it that? Uh, uh, spaceship Police Future PS1. Come on, Google. Come on, Google. Not Future Cop. Future oh, Cop LAPD. It, it holds was G up, Police. It was G Police. Does it this really? So I've never good. played it before. Um, so this is from what, 1998? What, what console was it on? PlayStation 1. PS1. Okay. Right, like 1998. Google G Police. This game was the absolute shit. Okay, so it G was, Police is the one, is it? It's a PlayStation game that you flew around oh in God. this kind of like attack helicopter. Um, and you had all these different weapons. It was so good. It was a, it was a bit like um, The Descent, if you remember that game as well, yeah. but like in a city. Yeah. It was just basically like being on a killing spree in GTA, but in the future. Yeah. Oh, man. Such a good game. I've brought it up now. It looks, yeah. It looks, yeah, it looks old. It, again, mm. though, it's super ahead of its time. Um, right. It does look ahead of its time. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, this is the upscaled and stuff, but uh, we're looking at it if you're listening to the podcast. Yeah. It's uh, very much it's PlayStation 1. It was PlayStation 1. at the time. Yeah, yeah. 1997. Amazing. That was when Princess Di left us. Just some, <sighs> context, oh, wow. some time context for you. Mm. Um, and also the same year my scale electrix was broken. Oh. Oh. Is Which, that how you remember when Princess Di? That's exactly how I remember That's it. That's the association. I got there. that for my birthday. And then wow. at her funeral, it broke. I say at What were funeral, you more I torn up take... about? A set of scale electrics to her funeral. Wait, hold on, Princess it Diana's was being on, funeral. Yeah, so it was on TV at the time, uh, and then my brothers were fucking around with my scale electrics, and it broke. <sighs> and I don't know. It's one. Of, they were so delicate, weren't they? Like, yeah, they, they were. Like, and if the car broke, then it was like an expensive replacement. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, a little brush. Yeah, very disappointing Thing and scarring. So if you um perhaps have kids, maybe take that on board. And if their you know toys are broken, it will traumatize them until. They're in their thirties, especially if there's like another tragic event happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but that was just if anything a milestone that yeah allowed me to remember. It, I suppose. Well, yeah, like it, this... it didn't allow you to remember it. It forced you to remember it. it like you'll never forget it because so, of that. Yeah. So mm. if a major disaster happens, or so thanks, Princess a, Die. A celebrity funeral guy. Thanks, Princess Die. Try to limit the uh, damage at home. All right. Yeah, I, I'm still traumatized by my sister losing my first edition Harry Potter book. Welcome to I've got the a first edition number Harry one. Potter book. You've got a first edition Harry Potter podcast. Yeah, I've got um, a first edition Order of the Phoenix, I believe. Wow, which is hardback. Right now, it's worth. I don't know how is much. Is it in good condi- condition? I think it is in good condition. Um, I'd have to double check. It's um, at my parents' house. Um, just on a shelf. I don't. I, don't, I didn't really put any equate any value to it. So I. We well, don't pick it up now and again like and just give a little idiot. read. Like a stupid prick, I read the book. Ugh. Oh God, I know. I should have just stuck Untainted, to the films. Like Untainted, Ross. Untainted. Untouched. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I don't know if it's dog-eared. It might be intended. Like... Yeah, I'll save it for the book burnings. Yeah, please do, because it's not going to be long now until no. Hopefully everyone flips and realizes we'll all that be book burning. Our we'll all be we'll all be book burning, um, and then we'll be like, Huge "What are we doing with these piles. books? Let's start burning hard drives." It's like, yeah, fucking yeah, let's throw our hard drives in the mix. Yeah, um, I'll be there pl- running a, a drill and microwave conveyor yeah. belt. I'm just drilling through any kind oh, of yeah. electrical yeah. goods. And these then... cables being thrown into the mix, like it destroy even, yeah. the internet. These cables yeah. are surging the devil's power. Yeah, I mean, well, um, what if it turns out that Ethernet cables can, um, like, they leave a shadow of the data that they 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 channel? So we've got to destroy yeah. them because, yeah, special technology can extract the data that's actually flown through them. It's so I mean, biblical. 
that, yeah, that is really biblical. The way you've just, yeah, the way to formulate a biblical idea into a digital <laughs> story. Yeah. The shadows of demons past. Well, I mean, there, there is this cable. big, there is this big the fear, winter. isn't there, that once quantum computing takes hold, all traditional encryption will become incre incredibly hard to actually maintain. Yeah, um, it will all so need to become quantum very to be quickly. Done, doesn't it? Yeah, but I mean, is that a case of, is there a, gra a gradient to that or is it kind of no. like an immediate switch over? It's almost immediate. Surely like, you would imagine. You have a quantum computer, right? That can just yeah. immediately do the hard, like brute force, every possible password on everything, essentially. Right. And if that just gets in the wrong hands, every possible encryption based on old zeros and ones. Um, yeah is obsolete and can be hacked so everything you'd ever want to keep private or safe mm. is no longer that um thank you very much to do you say jordan falconer for sending yes. in that fingle thank you very much uh, you thank you for our patrons who are sponsoring this sort of existential weekly existential crisis um we're trying to mitigate to that where we can with uh hilarious hijinks and uh hypotheticals yeah. so much hijinks it it's hard it leaks serious. in it leaks in every time and it's i mean we live in this reality don't we so unless well, we do we? do we oh god well let's get into simulation theory real quick yeah it, oh, everything is projected and we're actually a 2d or is it a two-dimensional species and existence that's projected into 3d Discuss. Maybe we're just somebody's comic book. Oh, That's actually maybe, a potential maybe theory, just, by the way. I just want you to maybe know. Our, yeah. What, that we're somebody's comic book? No, that we're a, we, we exist in two dimensions and we're projected into 3D. Oh, right, okay. I mean, yeah, I guess it could be. I think, I think a lot of this stuff could be real, but if we can't perceive it and can't experience it, it's essentially pointless to know. It's right? the running theory. Like everyone's like nodding. Yeah, because would you try to break scientists. it? If, you, if, if somebody told you that, would you, like, how, you, how would you communicate with that? The well, it's just, like, again, it's one of those theories that are like, the math lines up, everything works in the current model of physics and science. To, there's nothing that can disprove that, the theory that we are on a 2D disc, essentially, and being projected in 3D. Right. <laughs> so that's yeah. the current running theory that it's yet to be disproven. Isn't that insane? Okay, that is just <sighs> bloody nuts. I can't really <laughs> imagine it. No, so it's, it's like, unfathomable yeah. because it's yeah. not within our realms yeah. of reality to understand yeah. it, of course. So hold on. Let me see if I can Google some, some knowledge about it whilst Smith reads out our first Google. hypothetical of the week. It's more philosophical this week I went for the options. So okay. our patrons have chosen in the oh, following yeah, these order. Are, these are all pretty... These are all pretty deep um yeah. so the first one is uh thank you patreons people who sponsor this podcast they get to vote on these before uh, they go live thank you for these selections uh what should be the goal of humanity is the first question easy one um to survive yeah probably it's a good is good the question. basic good. instinctual level of no this, this is what creatures? should be the goal so what should be the goal what not do what, what think is I well, guess yeah, what I mean, is is surviving that, as a species is I see, we should yeah. be trying to make that work, and obviously that that's still something that we're working on. You know, I mean, well, I guess obviously right now we're exhausting a lot of resources um, to the point where we're polluting our just environment to, just to, to a dangerous well. level. Yeah, and obviously as populations increase, that's only going to become more of a pressure cooker. So we need to find another planet to live on. And right. I say Mars is really fucking cool. So let's go to Mars. <laughs> you know, I'm not... Would you live on first... Mars? Would I live on Mars? I could barely live in a kind of semi-hot country, so... I was going to say, Mar th th that's the problem, right? No no environment we will ever find will ever be better than this one. Of like, in terms of the flora and fauna of our planet is, mm. is designed for us. Unless you designed a whole planet yourself, which is possible, eventually. Yeah. Um, Unless we all become, you know, pod people. Well, we live is, yeah. inside pods where we just have a virtual reality headset on and that pod is stored somewhere deep underground and given a very basic level of nutrients and we just live our lives in our brains and then our bodies become a tiny little battery. And yep. that's, that's 
that's how I think things will go. That's 2023. <laughs> okay. So Ross has made that's his predictions year. for next year. Okay. Uh, quarter one, quarter two. What are we thinking? Um, I'd say quarter two. Yeah, give um, it a bit of time. There's going to be a bit of time to on the way. Of course. But I mean, would you? I guess the real question is, would you climb or be pushed into the pod? Would you jump in or just wait until you're pushed? It would because have think... to be like a really bad situation in the real world for yeah. me to willingly go into a pod like that. It would have to be okay, literally like just life or what death. What if it promised you... you you've just first, heard. I mean, first of all, in order to get people to be up for this kind of thing on mass, mm -hmm. there would almost certainly have to be like a trial, right? So you get to go and trial it, and then you get to come back to your body, and you get to make a decision as to whether you die a human, mortal, or you decide to do this connection. And I think... A lot of once you're in, you don't even do know if you're in or out. Well, exactly. Because this is it. Like, if you've just can... been convinced. So you're now just yeah. like in this one, and you're like, well, yeah, you can mm -hmm. go now, but buddy. And then you think you've gone, but you're still in there. Every decision is a cost benefit decision beyond like profound emotions, right? So, like, there are, there are profound emotional decisions and there are profound logical decisions that we all make. Like, things like, you know, choosing to protect a child or a sibling or, a, or, or something like that. Do you like hold that. in the shit or I, do you go I now? would say is. Mm. Exactly. Or Profound. when somebody is you wait until you know, it's about to fall out. Exactly. So so really this is this is kind of a a practical decision and an emotional decision. And you just need to do like a cost benefit analysis, don't you, of whether mm. or not I think that most people would choose to step into this machine because one of the greatest fears of most people is death. Mm. And if this promise to uh, change death into some exciting new boundless virtual experience, I think a lot of people would be interested in that. I think that ultimately you would one day miss your body is the only experience you could never ever have again is the feeling of actually being in your body. And I think a lot of people would miss that and, and fantasize about that eventually because it's like that is in a virtual world, you can but create any you virtual can't miss feeling. what you don't know. But you like, do what know, if we have come a body from this body? We but come what if from the we body. have an outer, another body, and we're in this yeah. simulation that's created by the pod. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it feels like to be that thing. So we've never had a body. We've then. never had. Well, then a yeah, body fine. You're fine. So what yeah, we're experiencing, what we're experiencing, we we feel absolutely yeah. fine with it, and we've mm -hmm. been tricked into going in there. And we said, when they said, "Well, you can come out whenever you want," and then bam, you've been tricked. <laughs> It's so convincing. You think you've left. You're like, I'm, yeah, I have autom autonomy. And yeah. Bam, you're still in that fucking machine because <laughs> you're a prick and you sign the contract. And but it's the all Zuckerberg. So you're underground. So it's fine. Well, this is, this is, we come back to this quite a lot. And it's Dude. something that I very briefly studied when I was about 17. Um, it's the brain in the vat thought experiment, mm. essentially, is what this is, right? Which is uh, um, Rene Descartes had um, something called an evil genius um, idea where basically he talked about a similar concept to the brain in the vat where it's like uh, you're fed all of your stimuli, right? And all, all of the different um, things that go, the signals that come in and out of your brain could just be synthesized or created and you would never know the difference. But essentially the brain in the vat is like, it's a thought experiment that allows you to look at things like reality, consciousness, like, you know, knowledge, lots, lots of things like that. Uh, we could go on in terms of bringing in the Patreon question of what should be the goal of humanity. Yes. I think that the survival thing is a very good point. I think that that's ultimately why humanity still exists um but it's a very like trot says that is like, a means how do we achieve to an end yeah. well the survival is a means to an end like trot says to what end why would you just survive survival right. simply for you know if somebody said here's well if i put you in my little container experiment that i spoke about before and i just gave you water and food for the rest of your life and you were just in a box you could survive but would you want to um right. but like what should the goal of humanity be survive mm -hmm. and thrive I, yeah, I mean, you you could probably go and quote a bunch of different, like, um, you know, like uh, proclamations of, of, <laughs> of various nations, you know, like liberty and justice for all and shit like that. Um, but I don't actually necessarily think that that's a practical way to manage humanity, liberty and justice for all. I think liberty for everybody is 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 a fantastic ideal. I think that it's quite difficult to give everybody absolute liberty to do everything and still have a functioning society. Um, but anyway, I think the uh, progress 
can really i mean it sounds very sort of silicon valley and a little bit empty um but like progress is the i think should be the goal of humanity um like you know like knowing oneself loving each other all those things discovering new emotional frontiers are all very great and lovely and an, an excellent element of being a human being but ultimately humanity as a whole can, needs to continue to progress we need to uh, and what does progress look like i think uh longer lives i think um more knowledge for everybody understanding of both ourselves and the universe that we live in um you know all these things allow us to progress and, and become better human beings unity is incredibly important the fact that we aren't <clears throat> over tribalism that we aren't really even over if you look at how the english world the english country works at the moment it feels like we're not even over feudalism we're certainly not over an oligarchy of structure which now exists you know in the form of businesses politicians all these people still form very much like a western oligarchy um so we've got a long fucking way to go but one day you'd hope that country borders would be broken down we're all human beings we all have different cultures different languages different appearances but like we're still humans we, we are humanity together and so if, if one day all of those things come together and, and we can bring everybody up to speed again a massive undertaking to get everybody educated get everybody access to the same resources um everybody feeling empowered and whole i mean it's hundreds of years of work probably um so i don't believe unify us essentially is kind of because then that'll allow but, but only humanity. in the if name of progress be on the same page of pro yeah. progression they're all in the name of progress but i don't actually do think better. this will happen by the way oh, no, i think no, i think this no, is a pipe yeah. dream. i think humanity will destroy itself before i actually think this like you know i i, I don't i don't think that we can do it i think that the amount of work needed to avoid a catastrophe a catastrophe that we have the capability to enact now and we we only become even more able to destroy ourselves as things progress as well this is what's so tricky is it's like we're speeding everything up we're making everything more dangerous more quick more yeah capable to um, offer a slightly more optimistic counterpoint yeah, yeah, to yeah. that mm. i think we are so uh fearful of our own death and survival is so intrinsic that we simply can't allow ourselves to destroy ourselves at the same time. There might be a point That's where true. there is like no yeah, return, sure, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a runaway effect. However, I think the closer we get to the idea that, oh my God, this is real, the mm -hmm. harder we're gonna work to survive. So yeah. there is no, a, there is a, a good point. We may not have a good existence because of what we've done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, I think we will potentially endure anyway because we'd rather not die. So yeah, no, I, I think that's a really good point. Human, human grit and determination to just fucking cling on to the to, to life. Yeah, the, no, I think that's pity existence nice that you have. At least you have that. You know, I think yeah, the fear of not knowing what is on the other side is enough to mm. motivate anyone <laughs> to stay alive and do something about it. So that's my two cents into that topic. Mm. Um, sure. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the biggest struggle is in getting everyone to work together to solve problems. And I mean, we've been through various issues recently that it feels like we've, you literally we've had an have example to... of what that is like to try and get nations to work together. And, you know, in yeah. some circumstances, they thrive in other circumstances. The, the people, you know, will make their decisions. And I think people yeah. have really struggled with empathy. Like it doesn't come to everybody until it happens to the individual. Take charity, mm -hmm. for example. Like, it's more often than not, you're not going to sign up to a monthly subscription for a charity unless someone um, injects themselves into your life by stopping you on the street or coming to your door and giving you a speech about why they should do this. And you're only going to really sign up if you feel emotions in that moment or you have a connection to it. It's like, oh, yeah, my someone close to me has got the x y and z and i feel like it's responsible for me to give back now that i understand it like we need to mm -hmm. understand it and empathize with it in order to do anything about things and i think that's one of the biggest flaws of humanity is you can't just like take something take information and be like yeah that makes sense i want to help now it's like nah, i need to wait for that tragedy to occur in my life for me to worry mm -hmm. about it <laughs> 
So I was listening to Frankie Boyle talk to Louis Theroux about this. It's like a podcast from like 2020 or something mm -hmm. where they're talking about a little bit about cancel culture, a little bit about other stuff. It's not really that much about cancel culture. I think the BBC actually led with it, like being like, As if it was, Frank, yeah, I Frankie Boyle and Louis Theroux yeah. talk about cancel culture. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting to hear about, but it's just the BBC being assholes, really. Get I think they just want, yeah, exactly. But what was really interesting, and it was something that I've kind of been struggling, or not struggling with, but thinking about myself as well, was obviously we make, I mean, I guess me in particular, I make quite a lot of off-color jokes and like stuff like that. Um, like, for example, the Rwanda thing, right? So we're sending, we're, we're talking about sending immigrants to, or refugees to Rwanda. Uh, this not is something that's going on. Just FYI. The only illegals, is it? I no, said so just not us individually, as in... Oh, we're, sorry, yeah, the government, the UK government. Send people away to <laughs> yeah, Rwanda. it's not our choice. The, UK, the UK government have decided that the people who, the, who the, the struggle people of England and strive to get to this country are the then going to be immediately shipped off to yeah. Rwanda as some so, sort of solution. We are responsible for this because we voted for this government, or rather I didn't, but you know, the voting body of England did. So that's that's why I use we, because people need to accept that they're also responsible sure. for this yeah. if they voted for this government. Um, but essentially they are sending um, refugees to Rwanda. And yesterday when we were in the warehouse, I was talking about it and I was like, man, the only thing I can think of, kind of jokingly, kind of, you know, like in that tone where it's like, I'm trying to make an inflammatory remark um, about Rwanda is the genocide that happened there in the 90s. Um, now, I looked into Rwanda last night because I was just kind of interested. I was like, what's Rwanda like? What would a refugee or an immigrant see if they arrived there? And it's it's a really beautiful country, it turns out. It's like a goddamn paradise in a lot of ways, which a lot of African countries are, by the mm. way. They're beautiful, like, garden countries. Um, very troubled in a lot of ways. Like, you can't disparage the um, the prime minister and stuff like that still. There's not, you know, it's a little bit less free. You have say, to remember that it's also kind of like Americans don't like all of America being clubbed together and painted with the same brush, Africa is even more diverse than that, I'd argue. Yeah, that as well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Africa, yeah, so yeah, go But on. anyway, so going back to, and I was like, man, yeah, like, is it okay to make jokes like that? And then I started talking, uh, listening to this podcast the other day, and Frankie Boyle was talking about it, and he's like, what you've got to remember is, and it is what you were saying, Trot, really, is that, like, people will laugh at jokes based on whether or not they have experienced the trauma that that joke is is joking about and, and i don't want to say the classic term make light of you know because mm. that's always makes it sound as though like, oh you're just making light of illness or you're making light of this and it's like well yeah and i mean you, you need to hear frankie Boyle explain this because i'm not going to be able to do it as eloquently but like he's like these are jokes these are these aren't like these aren't statements. I'm not going out there and attacking and laughing <clears> in the face of a person that has this. You know, I'm I am saying things to an elicit like a response from the audience. And that response is going to be colored based on that individual's experiences. And so some people who will take issue with certain jokes um will likely have had experiences that have led them led them down that path. It doesn't mean that, that Frankie Boy necessarily wants to target that individual and make them feel bad about those experiences, right? And, and, and anyway, what you're saying is like this empathy thing. You're talking about like, I think it is a lot. And it's, it's, it's something that I've spoken to people on the opposite side of arguments that I've had about like, why can't you just, you know, use a person's pronoun when, when, well, when they requested you to use it and, and all, you know, all those sort of stuff. And it often comes down to, and I've been explained, is like my empathy isn't, you know, doesn't extend that far. I don't care. Like, and, and I think that's kind of almost like a, a fair thing to say, an honest thing to say, because my empathy for certain situations, just because of what you've described, Trot, about like, I've experienced certain things and my my ability to empathize with people going through those things is increased because of those experiences. Um, but when like, you say you it, don't care, what does that mean? Because I can make light of joke. I can make jokes more easily about certain things that I haven't experienced. But then you say that we need to make everybody um empathetic or the need to make people more empathetic it's it's a giant fucking task to do to make Absolutely. everybody empathetic and and the ability of those individuals to be empathetic even if we we did something like that is is in, in a way it, controlled by what they've been yeah. through already and, and, and also um, it's like a case of the time that you catch them as well mm -hmm. like you can have the most empathetic person mm -hmm. in the world but if they've literally just witnessed a car crash or something or said something mm. tragic happened to them, just as you're about to say, like, could you spare, like, some empathy for me? 
I'm like, yeah. I'm not in a frame of mind right now to help you. Like right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you'd yeah, caught exactly. me yesterday, yeah. I would have absolutely, no problem. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's also a timing thing as well. Like humans change <clears> on an <throat> hourly minute basis. <laughs> so yeah. it's tough. So it's a huge task. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a time and a place. Like, for, you wouldn't say that joke in front of someone who suffered from the Rwandan genocide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. it's, but it's a, a comedian of, like, doesn't say, know like, who's in their audience. Yeah. yeah, like I say, I think Frankie Boyle explained it a lot better than I did, and I don't really want to like sort of put myself into a position where I can't, you know, give a person a good reason for what I'm saying. So, but like, I do. It is interesting. Like, you know, empathy is is very much a watch word at the moment of 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 the world or at least in the western world where we're all trying to work out how much to care about things ultimately because there is yeah. so much to care about and so much information to take in that you're like fuck how much of this do i worry about how much of this do i need to well, change yeah like because I mean, <clears throat> there's various obviously issues going on in the world but like mm -hmm. when people say oh you know oh so you're concerned about you know the war in ukraine but what about all the other wars it's like mm -hmm. well it's not really I mean, I do care about all of those other wars as well, but like, this is something that's either closer to you or something, or um, there's that's a like, bigger fear. That's in like the Black Lives Matter things. argument, where it's like, well, all lives matter, but yeah, yeah where right like, now well, you, there you're is you're an issue. That you're poor, but like, that's what you're targeting at. It's not what we're trying like, to say. That's what yeah. I'm empathizing with at the moment. I'm, I empathize with all those situations, but like, yeah, when something's so raw, that tends to be where people's attention goes and then someone turns around and goes oh well you suddenly didn't care about this war in this place but well you must be this this and that it's like well not necessarily i'm unable I mean, to be omniscient and yeah. take in all situations at once I, I think it's quite clear that humans are incapable of taking on too much based mm. on social media alone like having yeah. too many opinions yeah, yeah. like we we physically yeah. can't take on that so yeah mm. one war at a time is one thing i can process ultimately and it sucks there are multiple going on but this is the one in yeah. my focal point right now because it's the one discussed the most around me so it's not necessarily on me to remind myself every time okay, okay what other wars are going on right now that i have to equally yeah. share my emotional load with <laughs> i can't do that yeah like well, I, like, I wish yeah. i could what about autism and stuff is just so yeah. like frustrating because it's like well you can care about multiple things at the same time like did you see that and you're clip? not isolating specifically what's that the Good Morning Britain clip where you had the two oh, presenters and a climate activist. Yeah, oh my god. There's, and it's, it Good was Morning directly... Britain's awful, man. It's terrible. I know, it's awful. However, it's it's the fact that it's real is one thing. Yeah. And it was, it was... I saw a clip where it was put next to the film Don't Look Up, where they were yeah, literally in the same that, situation. Yeah. And so you got the climate activist that's like, we are on the precipice of you know disaster and stuff and we need to do everything we can. And then the guy's like, but what about your clothing? Because essentially the clothing you're wearing uh, comes from oil. And yeah. she's like, that's not what I'm trying to talk about right now. That's literally not the statement I'm making. It's like, <laughs> it's just, well, yeah. that is what yeah. about ism of like putting the onus on like, but you do blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, you can't complain know. about society, but you have to live in a society, right? Yeah. Well, well, so. also, I mean, uh, we this could go on for uh, hours, and none of us are probably gonna. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the thing is, what you got to look at is that like, there's an agenda above that as well. Yeah. Right. And, and this, is what, yeah. this is what I mean by I could it's go trying to downplay hours, it, isn't it? Yeah. What you need to do is you need to educate everybody enough so that they can see where big, powerful people are creating um, agendas. And I'm not talking about QAnon. I'm not talking about stupid shit like that. I'm talking about how like PR and propaganda and newspapers uh, can use traditional methodology to influence people and the way they see things and the way they think. You know, it's like it's like um, the other day I was watching the news and some idiot from our current government was on there and he had both the uk flag the union jack um and ukrainian flag right behind him crammed into this tiny webcam shot yeah you've got these two flags behind him you've got these two flags he's got both a ukrainian and uk pin next to him like this and you know and like this guy is is not like you know an envoy or an ambassador to the ukraine he's not any of the reasons why you traditionally show solidarity with these two countries he's clearly doing it to appeal to this you know, emotional need of a lot of people in the UK to feel solidarity with um, 
people that they empathize with, right? So, mm -hmm. so essentially they're seeing Ukrainians, like you say, or seeing the terrible things that are being piped into our news and all of our social feeds and, you know, the shit, the horrible shit that's going on in Ukraine. And this person is essentially just putting all these fucking flags up behind him and wearing all these pins in order to influence those people that are feeling genuine emotional empathy, you know, genuine mm -hmm. good feelings and thoughts towards wanting to stop a war. He's using that in order to get them on their side. And, it, and you know, and that's all that is. It's not because that person necessarily feels a strong link with, you know, Ukraine or whatever. Um, it's because they want to use it as a method to influence and control people. And, and, you, and you just, you need to see that at top level. Same with Good Morning Britain, you know, all of these pieces have, even Channel 4. I mean, you know, I love Channel 4, but it's an incredibly left liberal um, format right now. And, and, you know, when you see the Labour Party using party gate when you see the labor party using um a lot of terrible shit that the fucking conservatives have done um they are still using those as tools to try and influence the voter base yeah. to see it because they have to use the same kind of tools because there's, there's all different echelons of tools right based on who yeah. you are what your values are what your what your aspirations are there are different sets of tools and as long as you understand that every single argument or every single action is crafted in a way to try and influence your behavior then you can then go out into the world and make the best possible decisions you, you possibly can but, that, but then this all stems from education access to equal opportunities access to wealth access to healthcare all of these fucking things you know like 70 percent of 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 people who died in america or something like that it were of minorities of, of of ethnic minorities um or were black in the u.s and that wasn't because covid or something is necessarily affecting them it's because a lot of these people um were poorer and so they had lots of pre-existing conditions that they weren't able to treat because they couldn't afford to do it. And therefore, when something like a pandemic comes along, they're in a worse place to survive it. If you don't have access to the best food, time off work, um, medical care, you know, all of these things come as a result of poverty and inequality. They don't come as a result of your genetics. And, and you know, so it's just such a fucking giant, giant, huge picture um, that, yeah, it, I don't know. This is why I think we're in a Let huge uphill battle. Let me propose a solution. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. 2023 rolls around. The apocalypse has yeah. happened, uh, like Ross has predicted, and we're mm -hmm. going to have to get into those pods. Everyone, it's it becomes equilibrium, the, the movie with Christian Bale. <laughs> People are learning gun catter. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, everyone's turned off their emotions, and ultimately everyone wears the same thing. And mm -hmm. just, in fact, we just don't have faces anymore. That would be easy, wouldn't yeah. it? We just didn't have faces, so there's no differences. So people can't just be all tribalistic about like, well, I don't know about that. It's a bit different, yeah. so I'm going to fear it and maybe attack it. But if there's none of that, that's like the perfect utopia, right? Yeah. Well, if I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, no. <laughs> yeah. But then, but then, like, the, that's the thing. Like, uh, I've been listening to Dan Carlin's um, Hardcore History which is really, really great podcast. Really long though. They're like four and a half hour episodes and they are dense. But I'm watching, uh, listening to one about um, Japan in, uh, in the lead up to World War II and how like the perspective of Japan and how their like ideology and their mindset came about. Really, really interesting. And, and like how the allies viewed the Germans as these like logical, ruthless robots. And then they view the Japanese as almost these like fanatical, unstoppable robots and and how yeah a lot of the time like all of these regimes and ideas and great new ideas for societies come along and yeah often trot they suggest like you know taking emotion out of it or in one of them is sort of taking emotion out of it and the other is harnessing emotion and purifying emotion right to like try and create um like sentiment or direction for a society like you know like this love of country is all you know that kind of thing is is, is another thing but just to finish this section the frankie boyle joke um, which is just brilliant. And I, I do, I love him. He's one of my favorite comedians. I know he's extremely controversial, but he is a bloody genius. And <clears throat> he, he, he brought up the fact that Great Britain sell, is the fourth biggest seller of arms going toward, to the Saudis that they then use to bomb the shit out of Yemen, which is a, uh, something that's been going on for years and years and years now. And it's often, like you said earlier about the whataboutism, often brought up um, when the Ukraine conflict is mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and saying like, well, Yem the Yemen war has been going on for years. And, and, and I, I think the harsh reality is that they're, they're not white, they're not Christian, um, they're not near Europe, is the main reason that people don't care about that but do care about Ukraine. Um, there are Some many, many reasons. reasons for that. 
yeah there are many many reasons for that you know legitimate and unlegitimate like or illegitimate um anyway he said that we're the fourth biggest supplier of arms to the war in ukraine and the second biggest supplier of aid to ukraine right this is true so we sell bombs to people to bomb ukraine and then the uk then sends aid to yemen who is being bombed by the weapons that we're selling um and and Frankie Boyle said, well, it's, it's obviously, you know, when life gives you Yemen, you give Yemen aid. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's insane, hell. isn't it? It is insane. That is the world we live in. The world is fucking crazy. There's no rules. We don't live in an advanced society. We live in an oligarchy. Uh, what's the next, um, oh, what's the next Patreon question? <laughs> it says, does a person's name influence the person they become? Was Frankie no, Boyle destined to be a really um, weird name? <laughs> I guess I the NFL so. royalty, or like I guess wealth. I reckon it is. A I reckon it does name means something. Yeah, I reckon it does, because if you name yourself Alex Smith, for example, um, or you've been called Alex Smith, you've come from a line of people that probably had that as a profession, or it stems from at least in the UK. I can't say that for every country, but it's part of like who, what the family did and your status in society. Mm -hmm. So I still think that has a lingering effect. How would that effects. affect how you, what you become though? Like Sometimes there's old money in it and therefore right. you grow up in a situation because of your name and your heritage of being, you know, slightly wealthier and therefore put into private school or slightly better education. And I think your name can change that. And uh, if you're, why didn't a... I get involved with toy trains? I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. He should have. Yeah. I, I should to have be fair, chat... with those toy trains. Chat's brought up a good point. Look at Colin Hanks and Chet Hanks. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is a great point. You know, give a True, guy yeah. a an old, unassuming, reliable name like Colin. Uh, you get Colin Hanks. Give a guy the name Chet, which to Chet. me does sound like a bit of a bra. Um, bra. I don't know whether. I mean. That's obviously my conditioning and my experiences of all yeah. people I've ever met called Chet coloring this. I, I mean, think watch the documentary about that. Where oh, Chet... boy, that guy is off I mean, the rocker. Fame affects people in different ways. But yeah, because like, he was saying that he wasn't like, he didn't live a lavish life growing up, mm. and stuff, which obviously it's hard to know whether that's true. Um, like from what I've Colin seen... obviously has had a mm. Hollywood career so far, and I don't know what. Colin Chet seems like up fully to. groomed in Hollywood, right? He seems like the, yeah. the perfect Tom Hanks yeah. son. Yeah, yeah, brought yeah. into the world to but your embody. brother but your brother recently mm -hmm. that's a quote mm -hmm. uh anyway um <laughs> about that yeah chet is clearly a guy that the black sheep of the family that wanted to like be anti-hollywood yeah. not not be a part of it i can admire his brazen attitude and like the things he does say although really like stupid sometimes and really outspoken and needs to be filtered or like said in a mm. way where you can get his point of view across better he's not exactly he's just a guy that's struggling with the situation exactly I think. Also, yeah, you wonder whether there was a rebellious yeah. stage that kind of like because yeah. it seems like he obviously he's know, got the confidence friends, of an actor friend group and, the, and then also yeah. and the money and the money well, you, you his both have... game. I, I don't know there's an element there from the interviews he's done that he, he just doesn't necessarily enjoy that his dad is like this person mm. who overshadows everything he does so maybe that's that's you you both have siblings as well right you know you know you know how you're different from those siblings uh, i think like we not only we as siblings we tend to have vaguely similar experiences in our formative years you know if we've lived in the same household or we've lived in with the same structures we have vaguely similar experiences but beyond that you know your your physiology is different you're going to have different experiences in life um in in your in your private time or your school time or whatever so like yeah you can i i think you can look at your siblings and see how you can be different you can be different people no i, I don't think a name influences a person really it's the answer well to i'm all i'm saying is if you go to school or you go around mm. your local village and you're a trot and you get spat on that does encourage <laughs> Uh, still like how you're going to act as a person it's like oh there's a oh, fucking God. trot over there <laughs> we all all the kids come and spit on the trot the whole school of kids are walking through the village God, I can't, don't I've got hang around them trots uh, they're fucked up yeah they're fucked up 
You're and a did fuck you lot. did you not talk about families as a whole? Like, don't speak to them, or like, oh, you better watch um, out for those those that group of family. Yeah, they're mainly travelers, though. But even I'm not then, gonna like, lie. The name, the name, I wouldn't carry that name over to like if someone else I met with that same like surname, I wouldn't carry that that idea of them. If if an individual yeah. acted in a certain way, I wouldn't use that name. That wouldn't carry with me. Normally. There's a bit of prejudice, though. I think. Oh, you might remember that. You might remember that. Yeah, you might. Oh, I mean, these oh, Smiths. I know what they're is, like. This this question. Does this person? I mean, that that is very true. To be honest, the the influence that a person's name, and this is why I said right at the start when you asked the first question, I was like, depends if you've got a weird name. It kind of, as in, plays into what you're saying, Trot. Is that a person's name can influence who they become? I suppose because, but it's, it comes from the outside, right? It comes from people persecuting you, perhaps based on that name. Um, Doesn't all and, of your personality come from that? Yeah, I mean that that's fair. I, I think that a person you can't give a name to a person and go, this is. This is going to influence them, but it can influence them. I think it can have an effect. Yes, tell that to but it the doesn't Dalai Lama. define them. It doesn't define them. <laughs> the da- tell that to the Dalai Lama, uh, whose name wasn't Dalai Lama when he was born. What about Trot? the fucking Pope? He chose his name too. His name's not Pope, right? No. <laughs> is it not? No, it I know is... what you mean. Choose, they choose their, they like, choose their name and then they inherit that yeah, title. Yeah. influences who they are. All I'm mm. saying is their names do influence... No, fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, that's good. <laughs> In certain uh, I, capacities. I like it's down to yeah. the individual. <laughs> yep. Also, like if you have a really good surname that's like nicknameable, that influences yep. who you are. Like useful. there's a person that I knew called Nathan Boone. He became yeah. Booner and everyone called him <laughs> Booner. And I feel like he in- embodied what a Booner is, which is like, <laughs> all right, mate, I'm a fucking Booner. <laughs> and he got, think I think he lent into that name more. Now. <laughs> the chicken booner likely yeah it, 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 it rhymes well like in particular it, was, it no. wasn't spelt b-h-u-n-a believe no. it or not like, I'm hey, hearing you'll call that from somerset booner chicken tiga booner <laughs> but turns out booner's ancestors actually came from india right. uh, who knew and that's why he has the last name chicken booner chicken <laughs> booner it's his yeah. specifically that dish my surname's chicken booner <laughs> long chicken story booner. i got 800 okay. years of heritage that i can trace back to the wonderful india um yeah well but i i mean the last patreon question maybe we can do for next time or something because it's another huge it's big one, one. Yeah, where yeah. does your self-worth come from my name Wait, my honest, surname all, all of both of these questions both the name one and the self-worth one i think can actually probably be wrapped into one in they're the, quite connected yourself, yeah yeah, your self worth largely comes from your experiences and those around you, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, it's, 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 it's often not self discovered anymore, and this is something that people say Instagram is bad for. For example, we've rewired our our circuits to think more of what other people think of us than what we think of ourselves. Um, yeah, to put value on other people's opinions and therefore over your own as well, which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. right. Like you pigeonhole yourself in school because you want to be accepted as a person. You want to fall into a group because. Mm you want friends and stuff, you kind of shape your personality around the people around you a little bit to fit in. Or you mm-hmm. actively reject it because you want that to be your personality. It's like, I want to be the misfit, the outcast, because I don't fit in anywhere because I've got other issues <laughs> that are coming okay, out exactly. in this way. So uh, It's because we all secretly seek to belong. Well, not secretly. Even. <clears throat> we all desperately want to belong to something. Everybody does. It's a human trait. It's why we succeeded, because we're social we work together so even generally in, in speaking, pariahism yeah. yeah generally speaking i think <clears throat> it's one of the core well, unless of course there are psyche. like mental health issues and stuff that like change the way our brain processes work and don't fit the norm then mm-hmm. yeah that's the uh, extenuating the norm yeah neurodivergence but then what is the norm let's dig into what we feel and what creates norm it's the mean it's the mean What's average right you, you take everything it, divide yeah. it by itself <laughs> that's I know. I think that's a pretty, yeah. pretty good attempt. You know, there was um. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into this. It's uh, Ross Ewell's. Is it Adam Curtis, the documentary maker? Yeah. You usually, I usually come up with the wrong name, but there's a documentary which is incredibly hard to follow again because it's too long. Um, and energy uh, information. They are dense. long. They're long documentaries. He was talking about some scientists, I think, in the early 20th century, who were trying to make nature um into an electrical circuit. So they took everything in nature, everything that happened the rain, 
the animals, the way plants grew, and they tried to turn all of it into logical circuitry to try and work out a way to understand the world through and logical it. means. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and to do all sorts. I mean, it was completely absurd, and and you know, nature's far too complicated to to do that to. Um, obviously, <laughs> I feel. Um, but uh, this was a time when that kind of thing was coming along. And it, yeah, I think interesting. It's just so much to watch and learn and read out there. It's, it's it's terrifying to try and become a informed individual. And we wish you all the best. Hopefully, the Hat Chat podcast is helping you become informed. Probably not though. Yeah, we, um, we're not known to be that inform formative have we made you empathetic today speculative yeah. guesswork or speculative but, guesswork i think it's speculative, speculative guesswork, guesswork. Is... maybe we should rename <laughs> ourselves to speculative we guesswork Indeed. <laughs> i love we it just guesswork's a good shout but a good name for podcast i guess that's the reality of most people you just you know sit around with their mates what do they talk about like you know no one's an expert in this is like classic you know, pub talk isn't it where you're just yeah having some set beers and you're being, right. you set the world to right and yeah we're going to fix all our problems all we need to do is a humanity <laughs> right you're you're you know, going the dark Boris spot Johnson's just like one of dark. us yeah, yeah. <laughs> really <laughs> deep down he's i saw him with a pint in his hand which means he's just like me everyone needs it's a simple birthday party. to go and i don't need to look further into it that's it yeah, yeah. He may have spent nine fucking minutes in a room with his birthday cake but what about all the christmas parties as well they're using right don't well this I mean, goes back to listen. the empathy thing again yeah. and uh, fucking yeah. responsibility and rules and yeah authoritative figures and it's just bollocks and we there's, live there's it, a and simple and rule i don't even want to think about it i can follow and it is the following uh does this act that i am an enraged about or annoyed at or fearful of hurting anybody does mm. it does it hurt you or hurt anyone around them if no then it shouldn't bother me like that's basically it like it comes down to yeah. pronouns for example does that pronoun the person identifying themselves as that individual does that hurt that... me or anyone yeah is that their choice yeah doesn't hurt me that's not my problem and i'm yeah. all fine with uh whatever they would like me to call them it doesn't bother me that's so true, yeah and if it does, maybe reflect on why. And like, yep. is there a serious, good logical reason as to why? If not, then it's not your problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Let it go. It's not worth it. And that's what yeah. I live by. And that can be I applied to. to a lot of things. Yeah. Indeed. A lot of things where people who aren't even involved in those circles want to dictate over how people live their lives, which mm -hmm. is, you know, you see a lot of that in, in um, the US lately with LGBT uh, rules and abortion rules and stuff like that, where it's just like, this doesn't even affect people such, who are like making these rules and it's just such like a reaction to it you talk they talk shit about freedom all the fucking time and yet they're so restricted and it's like and the it's fear like, of like, yeah, like yeah. toilets aren't so safe and like all that yeah. bullshit it's like, not about it's freedom like, it's you're about not for freedom you're yeah. making restrictions over your belief system yeah and it's all out of fear it boils down well. to religion as well it's just like oh i can't stand watching that assumptive stuff. fear and, like, but um yeah when rule makers break the rules that is really fucking annoying and it's so hard to like just bottle it in and mm -hmm. you want to just spout off and say bollocks but you know it won't mean anything or do anything so yeah Vote just, is your only answer yeah and that's the that's the only thing and you just got to hope that people see that and mm. yeah the it's most the frustrating problem, thing it, is like... just the the man on the street when they do this stupid pointless interviews of people in the middle of the day <laughs> they just sat on a fucking park bench like oh yeah boris is all right yeah he's, just, he's one of the people it's like you have no fucking idea. You haven't even looked into it. You just look at a very basic image of something, apply it to yourself in in uh, like a rel relatory, relative term. Yeah. And then that's it. That's enough. Yeah. But that your just your vote made a decision that fucked someone else in a big way, and it's dumb and it's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. It just frustrates me. Yeah. Like, well, I don't think billionaires making like, right tax time, decisions guys. for millions of people, and they're sitting in their billionaire like towers, just like. Well, we did, we didn't pay much tax because well we've got the money to find ways around it. It's like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> they can't rule forever, Ross. They can't rule forever. Don't worry. Well, what if uh, they get no, the anti-aging stuff them. before everyone else? Anyway, well, I mean, then they'll get day. murdered by a mass of rebellion. <laughs> uh, you know, the, <laughs> we'll the find a way. Coming back out, uh, we're gonna have to borrow the gear team from France whilst they're too busy being a right-wing nation. Um, <laughs> trying to bring that back as well. You see that. <laughs> 
the guillotine. Well, she does, doesn't she? she the pen. Go, yeah. Oh, I think we should execute yeah. people. The old classic. No, I don't no, believe don't in worry. death penalty. It's completely fucking pointless. Right, we've got to go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening today. Lots of love. Stay, stay safe, alive. Yeah. Stay, stay alive. Stay happy as you can. Enjoy it's, the sunshine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Enjoy the lovely things that is being alive for the brief blink of an eye that humanity has existed. Mm. Yeah. Someday you'll turn around and be 34. Mm. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>